welcome to my channel if you're new here. My name is Catherine and I'm going to be sharing my labor and delivery story. I felt like my labor and delivery went a completely different direction than I had expected and I had not heard anybody else labor going this way so I wanted to share my story slash testimony today. And here with me I have my husband who's going to help narrate the majority of the story because I don't remember most of it. I'm going to be hearing most of what he has to say for about the first or second time because I have had him to reiterate the story over to me and there's still questions that I have. So I made it to 40 weeks full term. We just knew that we were going to have her on Thanksgiving or before Thanksgiving or a little bit after Thanksgiving but that did not happen. So I found out that I was having Braxton Hicks around 37 weeks and they were just randomly happening. Braxton Hicks are lost contraction. They are random they do not have a pattern like regular contractions do i started to have them throughout the night and that would make me think okay she's coming really really soon they were inconsistent but they were consistent enough and they were happening enough and my husband was timing them enough for us to be like okay she's coming soon but that did not happen they told us the braxton hicks were practice for the big day remember i had the tracker app and it was, you know, sometimes all over the place. Actually, most frequently in the middle of the night. Um, a lot and, in the middle of the night. Yeah. It's crazy. That's why I was like, we just know she was going to come during the middle of the night because that's when most of it was happening. It wasn't painful like everybody said it would be. Um, it was just enough for me to, to, like, stop what I was doing and be like, okay, we need to start timing it. And we were having them at the 36-week mark and consistently after that. Currently 2.45. I've been up since 2.22. That was not. Really helps. I'm almost tempted to want to bring it with us to the hospital. Mm. So I don't feel it, but I feel the tightness down here. That's the thing. It's, the traction just sit. I got it sit. I feel like I get back in this bed. It's gonna shoot up. What does it look like? Uh, strange. It looks strange. Basically, it, was, it started at 2:22. You had 14 minutes worth of contractions. You had six minutes of not having. I just got back from our 36 week big appointment. This game on starting next week. We could literally have a baby. <laughs> How am I feeling? I'm slowing down a lot. Experienced my first set of light cramps night into the morning. My husband was timing them. We saw my doctor today. He said that's totally fine. That is the beginning stages of my body preparing to go into labor, which is crazy. It's so exciting. So her head's down here, her butt is right here, and her legs and feet and hands. Y'all, this is happening. I have to have a whole child. <laughs> Just got back from my 37 week doctor's appointment. Still pregnant. <laughs> not dilated but they told me not to get discouraged because um i can literally go into labor tonight i can go into labor tomorrow it's just letting the body do whatever it needs to do most people when they are dilated at these appointments like they still don't go into labor until much 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 later so she just told me not to get discouraged which i'm not i thought my water may have broken yesterday because it was like trickling but it probably was just urine so we're still pregnant we're still doing good I am on my exercise ball because we are going to slowly move this labor forward. Oh, and my diaper bag just got here too. Thanks, babe. We had our OB appointments weekly at this point. So once you hit the 37 or 36 weeks of being pregnant, you see your OB consistently. At least we did. Hit the 37 week mark and then the 38 and she didn't come on or before Thanksgiving. Our next OB appointment, we have a conversation that if she doesn't come on her due date, we have to start talking about our other options, which were induction. Babe, we made 39 weeks and we're still waiting on her. I am feeling it. I am feeling the heaviness. I am feeling the discomfort. And I won't complain and I won't rush her as much as I want to. Whatever she wants to do. Thank God, I got a plan. And I'm just here along for the ride. <laughs> but we have Thanksgiving coming up in four days. Do you think she's gonna be here before Thanksgiving or on Thanksgiving? My doctor, we, we saw him last week and I was like, are you available on Thanksgiving? He was like, well, no. I don't know if you saw the paperwork on the third page. We turned it upside down and I, I, my heart was beating. And he's like, I'm joking. He was like, if she comes on Thanksgiving, that's more to be thankful for. So fast forward, we are now at 40 weeks. We went to go see Black Panther. It's funny because in our second trimester, we were like, we hoping we make it to this day. 
told you to watch it before I went into labor and we watched it and no labor just yet <laughs> and I knew from the beginning that I did not want to have an induction so I started to get worried uh, we started to have a conversation what our next steps were We are exactly 40 weeks. We're still pregnant. <laughs> it's turn. Enjoying Thanksgiving food. One thing that we didn't find out till we made it to 40 weeks was that they have to medically intervene because the placenta mm. stops producing the nutrients that it needs to. Just thought she was just nice and cozy in there, but there is a definitive end period <laughs> yeah. for the pregnancy before she's got to come out. So. Our appointment was on a Monday and my 40 weeks I had made on a Sunday. So here we are on a Sunday morning, we're getting ready for church. I'm not thinking that we're going to go into labor at 40 weeks at all, um, seeing that we have my appointment the following day. Get ready for church that morning and God basically told me that we were going to go into labor. And this was going to sound crazy. I was just literally putting my makeup on and I felt like I heard God say, make sure you put your makeup bag inside your hospital bag. At this point, we had everything prepared. Everything was in front of our dining area, and we had the stroller, we had my hospital bag, his bag. We were ready to go. It was just any day now, we were waiting for her to come. I ignored that voice, and I felt like he said it again, and I was like, okay. I have all of our stuff by the door right now. <laughs> the stroller, my blanket and pillow, my hospital bag, breast pump, my bag, and then the nurse's baskets, and then my husband's basket pretty much have everything prepared we got her little swing snuggle me her crib is up right now she can literally come today and we will be ready we're driving to church and i hear the holy spirit say again you're going to go into labor and i feel it and he keeps repeating himself i didn't want to tell my husband because we're excited and i was like what if it's just me in my head saying this so eventually like this tug is like say something so i finally tell my husband i was like i think we're gonna go into labor he was like really i was like yeah i heard it while I was in the bathroom earlier doing my makeup and he was like okay cool I'm ready I'm ready and I was like me too I'm ready so we go through church and then after we go eat at another broken egg and then I have my first what I thought was a Braxton Hicks but end up being a contraction which we figure out later on at the restaurant and it was a little bit more painful and so my husband timed it and we like hurry up and got the receipt yeah we, yeah we paid and went to walk around because sometimes that helps like with the pain mm -hmm. i have not been able to eat anything sweet i usually go to the restaurant and eat savory or salty things but that was the one day i was able to eat it and i didn't feel like i had to vomit which should have been a sign that labor was super soon i don't know it might sound really weird but looking back I was able to eat something that I couldn't eat the entire pregnancy. So we hurried up out of that restaurant and I was like, okay, well, that was another Braxton Hicks, what we thought. What time was it later on where everything started popping off? <laughs> so after we walked around, we kind of went home and then it was really just like a couple hours later, we got into this situation because I had promised you I was going to pour you, you know, some bath water. Mm -hmm. and just to reiterate, at this point, at 40 weeks, y'all, I was falling apart, okay? <laughs> I was falling apart. I was 160 pounds. I had, was it arthritis in my hands? <laughs> oh, oh, man. I think I, that Saturday we went and got two compression gloves. Compression gloves in addition to like compression socks. Yeah, because my fingers were tingling. My legs were starting to get swollen. I had to wear the brace around my hips because the pelvic pain was out of this world. Like it was awful and painful. Um, I wasn't sleeping well because at this point, baby took up my entire stomach. Like my lips were cracked. I was breaking out. I was just exhausted at this point. Now I understand people say like, you be ready to want this baby to come out at 40 weeks. I was tired, but I was trying to keep a positive attitude through it all. This is, this is the last. We won't be back next week. Yeah, we should be back with her for real, for real this time. Today we are exactly at 40 weeks. We are full term. This is what 40 weeks look like. You see, you see that I have my glove on to have a carpet tunnel because my hands have been like purple. But I look good today. <laughs> he ran me bath and because I was like, maybe this will help with all the pain that I'm feeling. Around. I think it was like six. Where I started to um, notice that I was leaking light blood while I was going to the bathroom. In pregnancy, you go to the bathroom a lot. Every minute you feel like you're going to the bathroom. Always check after I use the bathroom because 
what they call a mucus plug could fall out. That's just light pink blood. At this point, I'm always checking after I go to the bathroom to make sure that everything down there looks good and there's nothing to be concerned about. But I started to notice that there was this light pink blood, but it was super, super light. I didn't think anything of it. And then I started to notice it a little bit more. I got into the bathtub and then I got out, went to the bathroom again, and I started to see it a lot more, but this time it was bright red. Nothing concerned me. I remember after doing a lot of research that that probably is going to be the mucus plug. I didn't feel any pain. I do remember them saying as long as this blood isn't like rolling down my leg. So I told my husband, I'm starting to see this blood a lot more frequently. And this was my first time actually seeing it thicker. It was super tiny but noticeable. So he was like, let's go ahead and call my OB. And I was like, yeah, we should just go to the hospital just to be on the safe side. But again, nothing in my head was like labor this is it, nothing. I think I just had the mindset of like, I just wanna make sure that I'm okay and he did too. And we were like, the best thing for us to do right now is call the OB and see what he has us to do. Sure enough, he was like, go to the hospital, that's the safest thing. Cause you were having contractions too. Yeah, I forgot I was about that. that. I think they were like maybe seven minutes apart and it had been going for like maybe 20 minutes. So I was like, okay, I need to go walk the dog and like kind of start putting the bags down in the car because on, on the service, it was after hours, we had to wait, mm -hmm. you know, 30 minutes to get a call back. And it's like the warning signs and the signs that labor are coming are the same. So yeah. We just had to make sure like everything was okay. When OB called back, uh, actually it was right about an hour that you had been having the contractions. At that point I had already put the bags in the car and we just like started on, started on our way. triage they take my vitals and they notice that i am in fact having contractions but i'm not dilated at all but while we were there how long would you say we were at the hospital before i started having like super painful contractions at this point probably within an hour so yeah things were moving so fast so it was about an hour but what felt like 10 minutes to me i'm having awful painful contractions and i'm starting to shake nobody told me that you shake when your body is working so hard like i can still talk and move and operate but i'm like shaking non-stop and the doctors are like oh yeah it's just normal and i'm like so well, now the contractions are picking up. I'm like having to go to the bathroom. They unwiring me. I'm with the tape still on my wrist. I put the IV in it. And I'm shaking on the toilet. I'm shaking walking to the bathroom. Shaking going back to the bed. And now I'm telling my husband, like joking with him. And like, whoo, this is it. This is exciting. Like we're having contractions. It starts there. And the next minute I know I'm like, give me a second. These contractions are painful. They're getting more and more and more and more painful. And then at this point, we're at the hospital for how many hours would you say before they were like, walk around for an hour? Probably oh, maybe two or three hours. What again, what felt like 10 to 15 minutes to me, apparently was two to three hours. I wanted to get an epidural, but you are not allowed to get an epidural until you're four centimeters. We're at the hospital for two to three hours, and I go from not being dilated to one centimeter to two centimeters. And they were like, we're gonna have to send you home because there hasn't been any progress. And I was like, is there anything that y'all can do? Is there anything y'all can give me? Because I cannot go home like this. But they actually called my doctor to see if they were going to discharge me because they saw how much pain I was in. We get notice from my doctor, have her to walk around. Let's see what happened in like the next hour or so. She become dilated even more because her contractions are so painful. The nurse actually recommended nipple stimulation. She was like, just walk around the hospital and do some nipple stimulation to get it going and maybe it'll happen even faster. So my husband and I walking around the hospital, these contractions are out of this world. I have to pee again. I, I literally see the bathroom. It was like an arm's reach. And I was like, another contraction is coming. We do the exercise the where I'm like, dance. yeah, the slow dance. 
while I'm like bent over and he's holding me, giving me words of affirmation and I'm like, it's coming, it's coming. And then I go to the bathroom, I sit on the bathroom toilet, another contraction is coming and I'm shaking. I'm like literally looking at myself in the mirror. I'm exhausted at this point. And we go back to the room. She does a cervix check and she say, you still haven't been dilated past two centimeters so they gotta send us home. And I was really sad about that. And she was like, no, just go home, labor, some rest, some sleep, just try to get through it. And I'm like, I ain't gonna get no rest like this. Do you like this? Do you not see the pain that I'm in right now? Like there is absolutely no way that I'm gonna get some sleep or anything. I was, I felt horrible. I'm like, they really sent women back home feeling like this? Mm -hmm. Looking back, the body is preparing for birth. Mm -hmm. So they really couldn't do anything. We had to wait till she was ready to come and we have to be further along dilated and so I get it now but at the time I just been trying to hear it before we even go home we get lost inside of this hospital because we get the wrong direction and while we're trying to get out of the hospital at this point you're not allowed to exit out the doors you came in so you have to go through the emergency room and so we're getting lost trying to leave out the hospital and while we're trying to get out the hospital I probably have five contractions leaving from triage down the elevator to the emergency room and I put my air quotes because we get lost so I'm in the hallway my husband over here trying to find an exit he has to leave me in like these random chairs in the like a waiting area and I'm having major contraction after contraction after contraction after contraction we find the emergency room he put me in a wheelchair I'm having contractions even more and more contraction. like they are increasing y'all and you get the people that was like you pregnant congratulations and I'm like like, don't talk to me. Like, I don't want to leave. And my husband like runs, y'all get the car. It's cold outside. I literally have a contraction getting into the car. I mean, one foot into the car, one foot on the ground. I'm like, here's another contraction. We get home, another contraction. We sit in the car. We have contractions leading up into our apartment, y'all. Them contractions were intensely painful labor at home and everything that I remember teaching myself like the breathing techniques getting on all fours using the exercise ball none of that worked none of that worked at this point I'm sitting on the floor with a pillow behind me my back pressed against the bed just remember the only thing that was going to get me through this contraction was breathing if I made any noise but like that noise I made and the pain from that noise made my contractions feel worse if that made sense yeah, it's like psychological. Psychological, yeah. So I felt like when a contraction came, I breathed through it. And this is something I actually learned from pregnancy videos, were to breathe, and when you breathe, hold it for as long as you're having that contraction. And I remember we were just laboring there. And after a while, I couldn't hold my breath or breathe through the contractions anymore. And that's how I knew it was time to go back. I, I just couldn't handle it and what I know now from what he told me what I didn't know before was that we were at home labor for two and a half hours and we get back to the hospital check me again and I'm four centimeters and they admit me all right this is our labor and delivery room it's our snacks all the nurses helping us little area over here I'm just gonna use to charge stuff some stools all of our baby gear. Um, I'll be sleeping there. Uh, we do have windows. That's pretty cool. And my wife is asleep right now. She just got the epidural. That's where baby's gonna go once we get there. So it's be some time today. All right, Mama J, how we feeling? I'm not bad with this epidural. At this point, I'm so exhausted because how long have I gone without? An epidural. How long was I laboring for? 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. So that's what, 10 hours? So I'm laboring for 10 hours without an epidural. My body's exhausted. I'm mentally and physically tired. So it makes sense why I don't remember half their story. But I do know <laughs> that once I was there, the new nurse was like, Do you want your epidural now? I was like, Yeah. Yeah, I do. Because I was so afraid that if I would have waited, I had to wait a long time for the person to administrate it to me. I was like, no, no, I want it now. I want this stuff to work immediately. And yeah. I think after that, I literally was asleep for the majority of the rest of the story. <laughs> and gone to sleep, like... Yeah, church. Eight like the day before the next day. Yeah, yeah, it was like two days ago that you had slept. Just got the epidural and no pain. Max. 
You do, babe. This was fast. This was really fun. I think we started at another broken egg. You did it, babe. You did <sighs> all those hours. It's in your body through the shaking, mm -hmm. the pain, and squeezes. Mm -hmm. The prayer we did in the car. On a nap. I cannot yeah. believe it's the next day in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I know my alarm for work just went off. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm definitely going to get some rest. She literally decided to come on her exact due date. But all right, babe, I'll let you get to sleep. Okay. I'm going to lay down too. All right, see y'all later. Man, that was just like a wave of like, finally, we're admitted. And we got into triage. I got us assigned to a room and... She was still in the middle of having her contractions and at the hospital in a way that I think looked different than how I thought we were going to end up there. You think like the water breaks. Water break, contractions, the hospital. Yeah. It did not happen that way. I just remember when we got admitted, there was a lot of paperwork. And if I can give anybody advice, mamas, when you are having contractions and they put this paperwork in your face, you are allowed to tell them like, hey, give me a moment. You don't want to be signing paperwork while you have having contractions. And I'm so glad I learned that from mommy labor nurse. She's amazing. She's a nurse and she helped educate women about the process of laboring. One of the advice was they are having you sign paperwork or when somebody's coming to the room trying to talk to you about business stuff, you can ask them like, give me a moment. Let me finish this contraction because there was no way I was going to be signing my life off in the middle of a contraction. I can barely remember what time or day it was. So just... Keep that in the back of your mind when you are in labor. Yeah, they weren't easy questions either. It wasn't like, hey, what's your address? It was like, it was full on con like contracts. Are you gonna accept like a blood transfusion in the event something should happen? Like, what do you want us to do? Like, so it wasn't just like basic information. It was serious stuff. Definitely felt relieved when we were admitted. Beforehand, I had made all these like affirmation cards. I had all these people like say positive things they wanted me to say to Catherine during labor and delivery and none of that even made it out of my bag. I'm telling y'all nothing, uh, we, everything went out the door for us. All exercise, all words of affirmation. I had a playlist for worship songs on there. I didn't play none of those songs. <laughs> yeah. Like the contraction, whatever that measurement um, instrument was, it went from one to a hundred, but then eventually it just started saying like a hundred plus. It did bring me comfort that the epidural like, kind of took the pain away, you know, because it was hard seeing you in that much pain, you know, just because it really just didn't stop, you know, so that's why I think to you it feels like having a contraction or not having a contraction. Those were pretty rough. You know? Well, the baby nurse just came by and dropped off first diaper, t-shirt, or hat. I'm not sure what that is. Everything ready to go. Mama's waiting. My doctor's gonna come and break my water last time. That I was checked, they said I was six centimeters dilated, which means I'm moving right along. Centimeter an hour. Dad got some coffee so he can stay awake. That's where baby gonna be in a couple hours. It doesn't feel real. I wanted to rest, but like I, I quite couldn't. I just wouldn't go to sleep because. I was hearing like her heartbeat and then like they were coming in so frequently. You could like readjust the sensor, update something, give you a new IV, all this other stuff, you know, check to see like how far along you are. Like the doctor came in, so it's just like, there's just no way that I was going to sleep in that moment. I, just, I think it just was like so surreal because in that room, that's where you know, everything happens. Like the baby's delivered in that room, baby stays in the room, the, you know, incubator. I felt relief, but also anticipation. My doctor comes in the room and he checks me for a cervix check and I'm six centimeters dilated. So I'm thinking to myself that this is going by really fast. I was one, two, four, six. We got three more centimeters to go and we'll have the baby be out the hospital. Um, but it didn't happen that way. I guess I'm asleep again. The only thing I remember at this point, I'm kind of waking up a little bit. I see someone running towards me saying, we have to give you this shot. Um, she's like, everything's gonna be okay. It's gonna pinch just a little bit. And then I remember them telling me they're turning me over and they're trying to get on all fours, but do not get on, like, do not lay on my stomach. Um, so remind you, I'm like waking up, eyes are like not even fully open and I'm really not alert. I'm like doing what they're telling me to do. I see my husband, he's on the side of me holding my hand. A doctor manager in there, and I say she's a manager because I, the nurse that we had have to call her manager. 
and then they kept looking at the monitor it kind of got quiet again meaning that the the manager doctor left and they were like okay everything's good right now what i found out later on from my husband was that our daughter's heartbeat kept dropping over and over and over and over i don't even know what's going on last thing i remember i got an epidural i guess i zoned back out and i'm asleep again i mean that was another part of the reason why i couldn't sleep because had got to six centimeters and still were tracking that heartbeat it was kind of just all over the place like there were times it'd go up to like 170 to 200 and then times where it would go all the way down to like 68 you know 70 and so that's another reason that like i just couldn't get any rest because i was just like okay i need to make sure that her heartbeat stays uh, at the right pace like is she stable is this uncomfortable like is there a different position that's wrong i'm trying to communicate that to the nurses and then also just make sure that you're okay in the midst of it well, this just tells you how tired i am that i don't even stay awake for this looking back now i would have done anything to stay awake but my body was just tired i don't fault myself for anybody i'm so glad i had my husband there to be able to even just tell the story and to help advocate for me because he did a lot of advocating he spoke up he ran and got the nurse he was reading the charts he was comforting me during that moment and i remember the second time my doctor's back in i'm thinking that my doctor's in the for the second time for like it'd been like two minutes in between the first time he was in there they did have to call the ob back several times because different things just started you know happening and the first time they wanted to get like more accurate measurements on your contractions because they were saying they're not stopping they're lasting four minutes instead of one I don't feel anything, by the way. These contractions are off the chart, but her door was working, apparently. They were off the chart. The doctor OB came and like, something to get a more accurate measurement on the contractions rather than like the little suction cups that kind of kept sliding off, which is another thing. Sliding down like, okay, let me get some rest. And then like everything just goes quiet. I call the nurse and I'm like, hey, the heartbeat monitor is like off. So they had to come in and like reconnect it. So now it's like, I'm really not going to sleep now. This thing could disconnect and, you know, baby moves or whatever, slide. That could change like where the heartbeat's coming from. This was kind of right around the time I found the coffee. I just started drinking a couple of cups of coffee just to stay awake, ask questions when they were coming back. I turned on our, our gospel playlist. It was, it was good. I don't think we made it through like three songs before they decided like we need to move forward. That was a little nerve wracking. And I remember my husband coming to me and saying like, are you okay? I looked at him. And I said, God promised us that we were going to have this baby and his word cannot turn void. And I remember just going back to sleep. I started waking up and, and was like, what is happening? And I noticed that when I would turn to my left side, her heartbeat would drop more. And I started to notice that I kept being rolled to that left side. And that's when I asked the nurse, I was like, if her heartbeat keeps dropping on the left side, maybe... Let's do a different position. At this point, I guess I go back to sleep. My doctor's in there for a third time. It takes time for him to get to us because like the nurse has to call and then he has to show up. Something like would happen like with her heart rate. It would call him for him to come by and then he'd come by usually like 10 or 15 minutes. Is usually how long it took him to get there. Say so he was there um, maybe every two hours. It felt like he just reappeared all three times. I don't know if he was speeding, but he got there very fast. He got there very fast every time. But every time I opened my eyes, he was just there. So the third time I saw my doctor again, and he made an executive decision that we should move forward and have a cesarean surgery before anything turns to an emergency C-section or just in case something went wrong that they didn't see coming because apparently we weren't making any progress. In fact, we had not made progress for hours. My husband and I have already spoke about the possibilities of laboring and all the things that could possibly go wrong. And we wanted to do this when we were at home in an environment where it wasn't stressful so that we could be clear mind about what we would do if this happened. We have both said like if we need to get a C-section, like let's do it. Because at the end of the day, I want to make sure that my baby is okay. I guess minutes after that, the whole cesarean team come in. They're literally there, like, in two to three minutes. Because it wasn't an emergency, they actually all came in and, like, they took their masks down and just said, like, hey, I'm so-and-so, and, like, we'll be yeah. doing, like, the surgery. Just introduced themselves. They were really nice. I, I don't remember none of their names, but I just remember, like, a flood of people in these blue scrubs coming in. Yeah. And they were just the sweetest. They were the nicest. They introduced themselves and said what they were going to do. 
And I remember just getting rolled out from there. My husband had to put on his scrubs. like his scrubs as well. And I remember looking up at the ceiling and I was about to meet my baby and I tried to just stay awake. This is the cesarean part that was probably like the best of our experience out of this whole story. I had to wait in the waiting room while all of this was, while you were getting prepped to have anything because I had to have everything sanitized. It felt like I was there like maybe 10 or 15 minutes while you're getting prepped. They came out and got me go time. So like I literally walk in the room, it's probably like six or seven people all doing different stuff. Everybody's advice was like, just don't look on the other side of the curtain. <laughs> I just walked straight to where like your head was at. You were like, kind of like laid out with your arms. Like asking like if she's okay, like how she's mm -hmm. feeling. Anesthesiologist and he was like, here, hold this bag just in case like, and you know, she gets nauseous. I'm like, huh? And I'm like, okay, whatever. And then I look at you and you're like, I feel like you said you feel like you're about to throw up. And so I was like, oh my god, okay, I'm about to have to use this like <laughs> this little like blue tube. Speaking of, I have no idea when the last time we ate was. Anyways. Um, oh my gosh, <laughs> you're right, we didn't eat. I have a broken egg. I was like, this story didn't go how I expected because I watched a ton of YouTube videos. People like they stopped by the grocery store first, they went to the gas station, they bought snacks. You follow me on my Instagram, I did a what I carried in a hospital bag, mama edition, and I was like, I got all these snacks and stuff. Y'all, I don't even know where that bag went. I didn't dig in that bag at all. You didn't. You didn't use that at all. I was in the bag. <laughs> did remember when you went into the room, y'all? There was Lil Wayne, like a 90s song of Lil Wayne's playing in the background. Fireman or Go DJ. I was like, I think that with the, the job that they had, that they would be like stressed and running around. It'd be like super serious, but they were so laid back and chill. And I think they did that so we wouldn't get uh, become afraid or get stressed out. And I remember having this guy who had like a Louisiana strong Cajun accent. He was just like, baby, we got this. He was like, you're doing good. He was like, your baby gonna be here soon. And I'm over here like in and out. So I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, like laid out. And I remember looking up, which I made the mistake of doing that. And it's a glass ceiling. And I remember my doctor, again, he just reappeared in my eyes. I'm like, when did you even get here? He already got his scrub and everything on, and he's like, okay, Catherine, we're gonna start. And I look up, and I guess they already started because I saw a bunch of blood. I guess he tells me that just to get me comfortable, but I saw that he had already started. So I like what they did there. But I looked up and I was like, oh my gosh. And that's when I said, I feel like I'm about to throw up. I look over to my husband, which I don't know where he came from. He just appeared too. He looking around, I see a doctor on the side or a nurse on the side, and she looking, I'm like, I just feel like I'm about to throw up. And my husband has this blue bag. And the next thing I know, literally y'all, I've been showing my baby. And I, I hear her cry, and I think to myself, she make noise. Oh, she cried like immediately. You got nine months with a baby in your stomach, and you wonder what they're gonna look like and what they're gonna sound like. And I hear her, and then I see her over the curtain. My, my doctor holds her over the curtain, and I immediately just crying. Everything around me doesn't even exist anymore. It's just like me and her. It's like euphoric, shocking. It was just like, this is a dream. Like she's here. Seconds, she's in a wrap and on my, my chest. I'm sure that's not how it went, but it felt like everything was just so fast. And then I remember looking over at the screen, cause at this hospital, they have a screen where you're able to see your baby. And I remember looking over, I saw that my husband was cutting the epidural. I thought he was right next to me. Uh, I mean, umbilical cord. I thought he was right next to me. He wasn't. So I saw him and I'm like, oh, he's cutting the umbilical cord. The guy behind me, Louisiana guy, he was like, do you see your baby? Do you see your baby? And I'm like, yeah. And I can barely see her because now I'm seeing two of everything. I think my body is just depleted at this point. I'm seeing two screens, two of, two doctors of the same person. So he like moved something out of my way and I like blink a couple of times and I was able to see my husband. I was able to see my baby. Here's something on my left side, somebody sniffling. And then I look over. I hope it's okay for me to tell him this. Sure. Okay. I look over and I see red in my husband's eyes and he's crying. I haven't seen this man cry in seven years. We're literally turning over, turning my head, looking at my baby and just crying. Because it's like in that moment, she's here. I don't remember anything else, but apparently I'm I'm back in the recovery room and I'm breastfeeding. I'll just never forget seeing her for the first time, seeing her, my husband crying, and her being on my chest. I just stared at her because I couldn't believe this was it. I think I'm pregnant. <laughs>
She just got her first bath. She's in her first onesie. Mama almost stood up for the first time. She's latching for the first time. These are her first footprints. Room, a nurse come in and she was like you need to take a break and, and get some rest you went through labor and you went through a cesarean surgery your body is tired I've been without an epidural for 10 hours then I have to get a c-section and now I have a baby on breastfeeding on me I'm so grateful for it your support baby this man really stepped up showed out never left my side and the footage y'all do see was all him i'm able to look back at this video and see those parts that i just don't remember because he took the initiative to record thank you baby no problem so now we want to introduce our daughter oh my gosh she's the most adorable little baby ever introduce you to the newest edition of our family she's been here on the floor with us not on the floor but she's been here in a rocker with us <laughs> I cannot believe I'm a mama. This is our baby. She is literally a miracle. Just super grateful for the doctors, the nurses, for my husband. We're just so grateful. All again for watching our story. She basically saying like, let's get, let's get this done with. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and the like button if you enjoyed this video. And we would, and that's our cue. We will talk to y'all later. <laughs>